Hi, I'm the Magpie. And I'm Jack. And this is Mondays, Mondays with Magpie. Hi, this is a Magpie. Normally it's uh, Mondays with Magpie and we say this is the I'm the Magpie and this is Jax but while Jacqueline is waiting for her baby to be born I thought that I would do a little bit of keto cooking. Um, I went on keto back in May because I needed to lose some weight and my A1C was very very high so I lost 20 pounds. Now I'm an older, huh, a senior citizen but my son has lost uh, upwards of 70 pounds uh, and he has managed to keep off most of the weight. He just went back on it to skim down some more. But um, there are many things that you like when you're on a keto diet and all of a sudden it's like, eh, I can't eat it anymore because it has sugar in it or it has soy in it or it has something in it. Well, the only thing you can do is make it yourself. My husband loves ketchup and ketchup that you buy uh, that is processed has a lot of sugar in it. Now tomatoes normally have a lot of sugar, but you don't need to add any more. And as long as you're not using quarter cups at a time, I think you might be able to get away with making ketchup. So anyway, I thought that today I would show you how to make your own ketchup. And I guess even if the rest of your family is not doing keto, it might be a good idea to let them try homemade ketchup and you'll get away from all the high fructose corn syrup and you'll get away from all the preservatives and I think you're going to like this. My husband is a ketchup fanatic and he really enjoyed the homemade ketchup. So first of all you need a crock pot. If you don't have a crock pot then you're going to set your oven on about 200 degrees and you're going to find yourself a nice covered Dutch or it has to be uncovered actually. Find yourself a Dutch oven or a nice heavy pan, maybe a uh, um, one of those cast iron Dutch ovens, but leave the lid off. Something that you can cook and you don't have to worry about for a while. The ketchup is going to cook for between 9 to 12 hours on very, very low. I am going to use my crock pot, but right now uh, I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to aim the camera at the ingredients because I am my own camera person for this uh, bunch of, of recipes. And we will go through what you need in order to make your own ketchup. So in order to make your own ketchup, you're going to need a few things. You're going to need two 20 ounce cans of tomatoes. Uh, they say peeled and crushed. Well, I don't have crushed tomatoes. I buy the San Marzano's on their peeled tomatoes, certainly. So here's what I do. I have a Nutribullet. I put the tomatoes in the top of the Nutribullet. I put on the lid. I've already done one jar because I'm sure you didn't have to watch me do whirring of tomatoes. All right, so here we go. So here's my Nutribullet. Ooh, dear, tighten the lid. Okay, and then give it a bit of a whir, not much. And now you have gotten rid of all the lumps and bumps and seeds and whatever. But later on, if you want to, you can also strain it just in case there's anything, anything left in it. So now that's 228 cans of, or 28 ounce cans of tomatoes. To that, we are going to add a plethora of ingredients. First of all, one half can of water separated. Remember your mother doing this? Usually she dumped it in the ketchup bottle when it was almost empty. Rinse the cans out. Don't lose any of the goodness. So there we go. We're emptying, rinsing all the cans out so that all that tomato is gone from the inside. And then we are going to use, I use um, 
This is ethritol, I think I'm saying it right, or erythritol. It's, um, it's, it's a kind of, uh, it, it's good for keto anyway. Uh, you can use stevia, erythritol. You can probably use Truvia. When I went online, Truvia is a blend of erythritol and, um, and stevia. But anyway, this is what I bought. So I went online and I, I bought it. So there we have two thirds of a cup of, sugar, of erythritol. And then we have two thirds of a cup of white vinegar, in it goes. And then we have one teaspoon of onion powder. And we have half a teaspoon of garlic powder. And then we have, in here I have one and three quarter teaspoons of salt, an eighth of a teaspoon of celery salt, and an eighth of a teaspoon of dried mustard, or that, a Coleman's mustard, with the dried powdered mustard, and a quarter teaspoon of pepper, and one whole clove. In it goes. Right. Now, as far as you are concerned, your ketchup is ready to be cooked. So I'm just gonna give it a stir, and then leave the lid off. So at this point, if you do not have a slow cooker, it will go in a 200 degree oven. And you're just gonna leave it in maybe overnight or if you put it in first thing in the morning on a Saturday morning if you're a working person and um, leave it in for 12 hours. Now, I checked mine at nine hours and it seemed to be the right consistency. You know what processed ketchup looks like, so when yours looks like that, it's done. And then you can take it out, and since I did it in the Nutribullet, I didn't have to strain mine. But if you just use crushed tomatoes, you might have to put it through a sieve, at which point you just get your strainer, one of those uh, wire sieve things, and kind of push it through with a spatula. All right, that's it. And that is how you make homemade ketchup. When you have finished with your ketchup, this is what it's going to look like. And it sort of looks like plain old ketchup. I put mine in a jar, but um, if you don't want to, you can get a squirty bottle. You can get them at dollar stores or at the cake decorating store, someplace like Michael's or uh, AC Moore. They have squirt bottles. And um, no one's gonna know except you that this is not laced with preservatives and um, a corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup, and sugar. This is a much healthier version, but as always, you're not gonna go overboard with it. It is tomatoes. Tomatoes have a lot of natural sugar, and you have to be careful. Enjoy.